criminals in the backyard wrestling team. Uh, I started backyard wrestling when I was about 16 years of age, probably younger than that. Um, I started backyard wrestling probably when I was about 16, 15, 16. Uh, you know, it was a group of friends went outside on the, on the old trampoline and, uh, you know, mimicked what we, were, what we were watching on Raw and, and, and uh, getting from WWF television. Uh, when, we first, when I first started, I probably, uh, Shawn Michaels was a big influence. He was one of the guys that I watched and uh, tried to, tried to uh, you know, perform his moves, you know, the super kick and, and the way Shawn would wrestle and sell him and things like that. Um, after some time and, and whatnot in the backyard and uh, after we purchased a ring, uh, the skills were just, you know, the, the basic bumping skills and, and, you know, and running the ropes and things like that and learning how to chain wrestle and stuff like that. We learned that, you know, just from wrestling with each other in the backyard and things like that. So that's how the skills developed that way. Uh, the Backyard Wrestling Fire Wrestling was called TCW, Tri-Town Championship Wrestling. It consisted of Oh, about five or six core guys who were there every weekend, and then you know you get your few other guys, you know your friends of friends who want to come out and you know and wrestle on a Saturday afternoon and you know enjoy themselves, and that's how that got started. Uh, the ring we had was was purchased from an older wrestler from Atlanta, Georgia, whose name was The Nightmare, and he was getting out of the business, and he had a ring that he drove up from Atlanta, Georgia to uh, Northwest Indiana where I live and uh, we purchased it from him and you know, that, was, that was four years ago and that ring is uh, still in my garage and up in the summer every year. Uh, fortunately enough for us we never never got harassed by the police or neighbors or anything like that. Uh, fenced in backyard so uh, you know we'd rest during the daytime and, and the ring's loud enough to where it sounds like a shotgun but luckily the neighbors were all cool enough not to, uh, not to call the police or anything like that. Uh, luckily enough, have not suffered any injuries in the four or five summers that we've been doing this. No one has, uh, you know, stiffness in the morning, but that's that comes with the territory. So, you know, knock on wood, that nobody has uh, sustained any injuries from wrestling in the backyard. Um, I'd say that backyard wrestling has, you know, I wouldn't say it's helped or hindered my uh, my impending wrestling career. And you know and where I plan on going with that. It's just something that I did as a kid that I that I knew I wanted to do when I grew up. Uh, you see guys that play football, you know, would play sandwich football when they were kids, and it, you know it helps develop your skills. And it, it pretty much it makes you a little more confident in the ring because knowing that you've had you know a little more experience. Uh, any advice that I'd give to you know fellow backyarders who uh, who want to pursue this as a career is to. Uh, to go to a wrestling school, you know, get trained professionally by somebody who uh, knows what they're doing. And, uh, you know, your next question, how, what do you do for somebody who can't afford something like that? Well, I don't know. I don't know how people break into the business without going to a school. I know I was fortunate enough to, to get on a TV show. Um, you know, wrestling school is, you know, 99% of the way most of the guys get in, you know, other than you know, your few guys who come from playing football or something like that. So uh, if you can't afford it, I don't, I don't know what to say, you know. Uh, I don't know. If you're looking to keep safe in the backyard, you know, I'd stay away from those, those light gimmick things, those, you know, whatever they hit each other with nowadays and all the, uh, all the hardcore stuff that really isn't wrestling, you know, the garbage stuff that, that people do, um, you know, that's that's one way to keep safe, you know, don't try, you know, too many crazy moves, things of that nature, you know, keep it safe, um, you know, watch out for those, those, those light, I hate those, those fluorescent light tubes and, you know, and all that hardcore stuff. Uh, the craziest thing I ever saw in one of our backyard matches was, uh, you know, we didn't get too crazy, it was more, you know, on the technical side, and, you know, we like to wrestle, you know, we uh, got our influences from you know, Mexico and, uh, you know, Japan and, and watching TV here in the U.S. Um, one of the craziest things I probably ever saw was a uh, three-way dance that I 
included on the footage that I've sent from TCW, they got a little out of control, but, you know, it wasn't even, now that I look back, it was crazy, but when we were doing it, it was, you know, it was just, you know, we were just having a good time, and things didn't get out of hand, it was just everyone was just trying to build off what the last person had done, so that was, that was some crazy stuff that we did, you know, just in those, one of those hardcore three-way dances that we had. Uh, my opinion on technically based backyard wrestling is that's that's the way to go. Um, you know, do your your chain wrestling. You know, your your headlocks and hammerlocks. You know, all that good stuff. Learn the basics before you go out and, and try anything else. That's pretty much how you know. That's how wrestling schools get started. And that's how things that's how things work. You know, you got to work on the basics and then go from that. Uh, the media perceiving backyard wrestling is that these kids are crazy and that they uh, they don't know what they're doing and but it's just it's it's friends going out and, and having a good time and, and the media may not see it that way but you know there's a lot of things that the media does and stuff like that that I happen to disagree with but that's just the way it goes who do I feel should be held responsible for the stereotyping of back at wrestling, well, I guess it's, I guess it's the kids who, you know, are hitting each other over the head with the, the fluorescent tubes, and, um, you know, there's, like, like our wrestling fed, you know, there's a lot of technically based wrestling, so, um, I think the stereotype can be changed by showing people, like here on Backyard Criminals is going to do, show people that, that there is actually wrestling involved, there's not just the, 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 the tubes and everything like that and doing all that doing all that hardcore stuff but there is actually wrestling that is being involved uh, being on Tough Enough was one of the greatest things that uh, you know has ever happened to me I got to live out a dream for 15 weeks and wrestle with the World Wrestling Federation in Stanford, Connecticut and um, you know, it's something I'll never forget and it's, it's springboarded my career you know I'd still you know, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago, I was wondering how I was going to get into wrestling, and, and now I'm, now I'm booked every every weekend, and it's great. So I'm um, being able to do that and doing what I love every Friday, Saturday night, if I wanted to, is is a dream come true. Oh, uh, when I was at the, the casting special in New York, I was probably the smallest guy there, and I I didn't I didn't think my chances were too good of, of getting on the show, and um, you know just. I wasn't I wasn't very confident in the chances of, of being selected as one of the thirteen people to to go to the house and live there. Oh, I think all the superstars that we were visited by, I think the one who was had the most influence and the one that I remember most now as I work the the independence and, and do you know, paying the dues, I think it's Triple H who when he came had the most profound impact and um, you know, things he said you know, those of you who saw it on television, you, you know, and what you saw is what we heard. We were in that ring, and and it was, you know, so, you know, here it is. You know, he's not pulling any punches, and he's not going to sugarcoat it for you, and, and that's something that I'll never forget. Uh, yeah, I feel the Tough Enough Show realistically portrayed the lifestyles of, of everyone in the house. Um... You know, what you saw on TV was, was what happened on a daily basis. There's a few things that they couldn't show, but, you know, pretty much the gist of, of what you saw was what was going on while we were there. Um, about being five foot seven or so, uh, I'm not sure right now if that matters. Um, I hope not, because I, I think I'm done growing. Um, I don't, you know, that's that's a question that's, that's hard to answer because... You look at guys like Ray Mysterio Jr. or Taz, for example, who are both not very tall, but, you know, the way that they get over and the way that they've done things is phenomenal. So I don't know the answer to that question. I'll let you know when I 